So ever since then, I've wanted to see what she can do in an open 5,000. Today we get that opportunity. A number of tough women in this race, though. Kellen Taylor. Tough as they get. And the women are off here in the Dashang 5,000 meters. We get that great drone shot and then round the bend here. Julia Haymock out there for the beast. She's pacing and then Marissa Howard behind her pacing as well. And we are underway. Julianne Staley in that third position, the 1457.5 athlete from 2021. That was an incredible race with an epic finish. Jess Hole took it over and Andrea Sakafian. And then everybody was cheering on Julianne Staley to break that 15 minute barrier. And she did everything she could to get under it and did it by two and a half seconds. So Haymock up front. I don't totally understand what the second pacer is doing, getting up on her shoulder. She just tuck in, let the other woman do the work. But they are right on pace, bang on, right in that blue zone. Um, the We were told there's going to be two lights here, a green light and a white light. The green light being the World Championship standard, 1457. The white light being the U.S. standard of 1509. The green light is now U.S. standard, uh, which is 1509 pace. So, you know, a lot of these women, again, you have you have some road warriors out there, some people who don't race on the track that often that are using this sort of last-ditch effort to qualify for, you know, how many U.S. championships has Kellen Taylor raced at? I, I can't count that high. I don't know. We're going to cut away to an interview with Josh Kerr. Be right back. Hi, everyone. Back in the living room couch with the one and only Josh Kerr, the winner of the Men's 800. So, Josh, how are you feeling? I mean, that was a pretty crazy race, and you like really stuck it out to get the win. So, give us a little race debrief. <laughs> uh, I knew I was going to be at the back early, just because those guys have really good 400 meters like times. So, I just wanted to make sure that I was continually pressing because. My start to make top speed to take so long. So, yeah, I was passing people the whole time. But I felt really good, never settled, and we were slow through 400, and I think I negative split. So, yeah, I felt really good about it. That's awesome. Did you enjoy the electric forest vibes? <laughs> Tell us how do you feel about running here in Portland? Yeah, we can be in any forest in Portland, and it's uh, the same vibe, you know. The, the crowd's amazing, and, you know, with patch races like Portland Track put on every year is... It's difficult not to come out and support and be excited to be a part of it. Well, congratulations. Great job. Everyone give a nice big round of applause <laughs> for Josh. Congratulations. Thank you. And you can sign this. Can finish. All right. Great to see Josh Kerr take that victory. And now he has won two 800-meter races at the Portland Track Festival 2019 and 2023. And we're... Coming up to 1,200 meters here with the women's 5,000. We've got the fan pole up there. I think Natasha Rogers is going to take it. Taylor Werner, close second. And 336 at 1,200 meters. They're on the blue lights. And we can see what the prize purse is sitting at for this race at the moment. Yeah, so 336 is 72. So it's 15 flat pace, um, which, again, I... That is incredibly fast running. Uh, Natasha Rogers obviously running that 1452 indoors very much within her zone. And I think that Julianne Staley is uh, looking to get under that barrier. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a formidable barrier, no different than some of the other greats in track and field. Yeah, she got under in 2021, and she's looking to get back to that form this year. I believe she's run 15, 11, if I'm not mistaken, this year. Or 15-15 indoors, I'm sorry. So Haymock still at the front, and Marissa Howard, the other pacer on the outside. And Staley right on the pace. Natasha Rogers behind her in the purple, that powder purple uniform. And her teammate Taylor Werner 
behind Natasha Rogers. And I got to talk with this Puma Elite Racing team at the 10 earlier this year, and they've got a great, a great team camaraderie going on. You've got Natasha Rogers, Taylor Werner in there, and Fiona O'Keefe as well. And just a good, a good team, uh, team energy training out in North Carolina with Alistair and Amy Craig. And they're also, they're making a lot of noise on the track this year too. It's fun to watch other teams emerge and compete for that limelight that, uh, that has been taken for a long time by teams like the Bowerman Track Club. Um, but many teams around the country emerging like Puma Elite Racing and the Under Armour squads too, which have been making noise. Strength in numbers. Yep, it's, uh, it's a real thing. I think a couple of years ago, USATF or someone did a, did a study of looking like where the, where the greatest athletes in the world are coming from. And it was a resounding over 90% coming from, uh, from enclaves, training groups. So there's a, an obvious benefit to having training partners to show up with every day at practice. Um, to push you, to make you better, and you know, on, on your bad days, someone else is be on a good day. So you got to show up every day, ready to go to work and, and ready to challenge yourself. Uh, the, the Puma Elite Racing Group this year indoors was probably one of the more impressive displays uh, of team running I've seen since some of those early Bowerman days when they would go to either BU or at the Armory when people were running just in groups of women running in the same times, um, but. Also, nice to see here Kellen Taylor sort of closing the gap between herself and, and Ali Bukowski. Um, Kellen Taylor in the hat down there. Bukowski, the beast, hanging onto the tail end of that front pack. Yeah, I think uh, there's a large amount of comfort right now in, the, in, the, in that front group of, of five, um, where I think you'll probably see a couple of these ladies say, you know, we're, we're off of this pace, how fast can I run? How fast can I run the last kilometer or the last mile? Um, and that's that's a, a tactical challenge posed by their coaches uh, to to get them ready to run at U.S. Championships, to get them ready to run at World Championships, where the paces are often fast and just require uh, an immense close. And seeing that critical mass up front too with this fast pace gets me excited to see the kind of action we're going to see in the later stages of this race because you never know who can emerge from that pack and have a great day. And if somebody does that who's a relative unknown, then, I mean, the newswire goes quickly. You're able, you're able to claim or to, to tout a favorite immediately. And then that person becomes the one to beat. So we'll see as Marissa Howard takes Julianne Staley and Natasha Rogers, Taylor Werner, and Ali Buhowski through the line there. Six laps remaining in this race. And now they're letting her go a little bit. Yeah, I think Rogers is gonna make up that gap pretty quickly here. Uh, you know, she's a gamer, right? She's got the time. She doesn't need to come out here and prove anything. She wants to win. She wants to show all of these other competitors that she's ready to go in four and a half weeks down in Eugene. Um, and so if there's gonna be a falter from any of the athletes, she'll capitalize on that opportunity. And she, she made that gap <laughs> back to the rabbit, uh, made that up in 100 meters. So she's obviously feeling really good. That's a great part about this meet too, is its proximity to championship season. It's a great time to make statements to your competitors. And a statement in the forest is heard far and wide. And now it looks like Marissa Howard is swinging wide here as they approach 3,000 meters. And Natasha Rogers will assume the duties with her teammate Taylor Werner hot on her heels and Julianne Staley trying to stay in touch as well as Ali Buhowski. But about 9.06 through 3,000 meters and we'll see what Rogers can do off of this pace. Yeah, I'll be curious to see what these teammates are going to do. You know, I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Taylor Werner, does she have the World Championship standard already as well? Uh, so she's 15-11. Um, so th there's a world where Natasha Rogers tries to pull her teammate along to get that world championship standard, uh, or at the very minimum, def definitively punch her ticket down to Eugene with a 15-09. Uh, but right now, Natasha Rogers is content to be out front and just really following the guidance of these wave lights. Uh, she's uncanny how good she is. 
at pacing. And two miles reached in just under, or uh, just over 940 it looked like. Thereabouts. Julianne Staley is down at the moment, but not out too. She is not letting the gap grow considerably. And Ali Buhalski is clawing back to Julianne Staley too. Those third and fourth positions. But this is Natasha Rogers and Taylor Werner out front. You can see Staley and Buhalski right behind them in the split screen. I stand corrected. Uh, Taylor Werner ran 15-11 indoors this year in that BU meet where uh, Natasha Rogers ran 14.52. Her outdoor personal best, 15.18.7. She's looking at a personal best. There's no better time to run on the personal best than a month out from a championship. So I think she's probably going to try and see how low can she go. Uh, and she's fired up right now. She jumped in front and took the lead. I remember talking to her before the 10, and she did some pacing duties for her teammates. And I asked her what they were looking to do, and she said, sub 30, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Love that energy. But Werner out front now, leading this championship race here in the Electric Forest this evening. Natasha Rogers behind her. They're both looking to get in the money, and one of them is going to take the log round home. Who's it going to be? Teammates out in front. It's funny, it's a consideration that I'm not even thinking about watching these two women race, is that there's a, a, there's a pretty large delta in the prize purse between first and second. So yep. that's another consideration for these women, that this is a job after all, and making money is important. Got to put food on the table. 11.31. Especially, especially of a distance runner. <laughs> 11.31 at 3,800. That was a 72.4, so they just keep clicking off 72s with change. And now Rogers goes around her teammate again to reassume the pacing duties. You can see their coach, Alistair Craig, jogging by him, giving him a split, giving him some encouragement. And now, yeah, Natasha Rogers coming through here, rounding the bend, Taylor Werner. And then that screen on the right, you can see Staley and Buhalski. And they're about four seconds, five seconds back. So still looking to get a good season's best here out of this race. And it looks like Buhalski is trying to make her way around Staley. A lead Staley. change again. Taylor Werner going around Natasha Rogers. Werner could maybe sense that the pace was slowing slightly because this is not even a lap that she let Natasha Rogers take the lead. And now it's Werner. Daylight between the two teammates. Werner is pushing. And you could tell she looked strong at the track fest doing that pacing job for her teammate Fiona O'Keefe in that 10,000. But now she's getting a slight forward lean going here. And she's inside 800 meters to go at this point. That was a 72.5. But Natasha Rogers not out of the picture yet. The Werner. last four laps for Taylor Werner have been 72-1, 72-5, 72-4, 72-5. I mean, they are just following these lights like clockwork, but you gotta have the fitness to be able to do it. The lights don't do all of the work for you. And Taylor Werner, and you know, if she can muster something here for the last 500 meters, she might she might drop under uh, under 15 minutes. The lights can show you the way, Will, but you have to do it. And Taylor Werner is doing it right now for the Puma Elite Racing Team. She's driving here, and we're coming up. Coming up to the bell lap, and they're ringing it for her right now as she approaches. She hits it in 13.55. So driving with everything she has, she would need to have a close under 65 to duck under that 15 minute mark, which is not. It's a tall order. It is a tall order. Not impossible because she's flying down the back stretch, continuing to put length in that gap between herself and Natasha Rogers. She's left the wave light in her rears and with 200 meters to go. Taylor Werner flying now around the 200 mark. And she's leaving her accomplished teammate behind her. Like we Natasha Rogers is a very accomplished 
individual here, 1452 athlete, Team USA member in the 10,000 meters. And Taylor Werner, this is her race tonight. This is all her. She's pushing, she's driving her legs, punching towards that finish line here, driving down the straight. The win is hers. What's it gonna be? 15 minutes passes on the clock, and it is 15.02 for Taylor Werner tonight. Natasha Rogers coming in for second as Puma Elite Racing takes 1-2. 15.03 takes 15 seconds off Taylor Werner's outdoor personal best, takes eight seconds off her overall PB as the competitors continue to stream in here. Katie Wasserman comes in third for NAZ Elite, 15-15. Ali Buhowski, 15-19 for the Brooks Beasts, and Julianne Staley, 15-24 for New Balance Boston. Taylor Werner, there she is, doing some damage tonight in the Electric Forest. Cranking up the voltage here for her team. Bringing that energy and that passion that she brings to, to Sub that 30, Puma baby. team. Yeah, we're going to the moon. There we go. Getting a hug from the competitors, Katie Izzo there. 